glad to be back. Sorry for the uh, short break. Um, I have uh, just returned a couple weeks ago from Colorado on my elk hunt, which was absolutely awesome. Shot a nice bull. Um, was was uh, with Nine Mile Outfitters out there who uh, really took care of me and um, definitely recommend them if, if that's something you're into. Nonetheless, I'm back with a special guest, this beauty. Um, so I'll be going through just a few thoughts. Uh, since I've been back, I've been playing with it quite a bit. Um, I'll go over some of the features of it. I'll give you my take on it, and then uh, you can decide for yourself whether it's something you're willing to jump into and, and put on your boat. First though, go follow me on Instagram. I have a lot more day-to-day -day content. If the YouTube uh, frequency isn't enough for you, you can follow me at s.g.homes. Um, a lot of stuff on there. Again, it's mainly archery bow hunting, um, but uh, send me a DM. If you have any questions in the future or anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. Now let's get to it. So today I'll be going over the dialed archery Arxos. So you've probably seen these. You may or may not have been on the waiting list for quite a bit. Um, but uh, if you haven't had your chance to, to get your hands on it or if you're on the fence, I thought I'd just go over a few things on the site um, with my hands-on experience with it. And again, let you kind of determine whether it's something you want to want to throw on your bow or not. So this thing is feature rich. It's got a lot of innovation in it. And I think that's probably the coolest thing about the company. They're kind of thinking outside the box on a few things. Um, but first things on it is you'll notice the, um, they call it the angled elevation system or AES. Um, essentially what this does is it angles the post so that you, whenever you go to dial the 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 uh, on your sight tape you have to move less which if you have to move this less up and down then you're getting more vein clearance so this site really is focused for um i mean really anybody but it, you know it really has some cool features for those of you that like to throw some long bombs out and that aes system is um certainly a plus another thing that which you know and this is kind of you know splitting hairs but you know, you can see as you dial down, the sight will get a bit closer to you. It's gonna be slight, but everything that I've kind of tested is as that, slight, that sight gets closer to you, uh, it does tend to be a little bit more forgiving. If you ever seen torque tuning or tried that yourself, um, to me, anytime I've done it, I've noticed that to be kind of apparent. Again, kind of a, you know, split and hairs thing, but I did think that was uh, kind of a neat uh, design whether they designed it to do that or not um, that's that's you know I, I don't know uh, next thing you'll notice is uh, you'll notice that the bubble is at the top not the bottom um, they call this the top level and with that top level and I'll show a picture in a second um, there's also uh, allows this the, the second pin on this particular site to be moved even further down. So they kind of go together and I'm putting these features together for this reason. So that, that uh, level at the top of the site housing, again, it provides more room on the bottom to lower the pin so that you can get longer distances for you long bombers out there. Um, the other thing, for me at least shooting it, my eye naturally wants to focus um, you know, towards the top anyway, closer to my pen instead of having to look down. So for me, at least I noticed it was less distracting and I didn't really lose focus of what I was aiming on um, with moving that. I don't know why other companies don't do something similar. Something to think about, Spot Hog and uh, Black Gold and all the rest. I thought that was pretty cool. And again, that Stub XR is the pin basically on the bottom of the sight post. You'll notice that gap distance is quite a bit larger. So again, you're able to squeeze out a few more yards. Um, again, for those of you that are that are slinging bombs, uh, 100 plus, you, you should definitely, um, you know, like that. The next thing, which I think is pretty cool, is their switch tapes. So this right here is, is the switch tape and essentially, um, you can take that off just by loosening the, uh, the Allen screw on it and you can pop that off and on. The uh, kit together or the, the site comes with two of these plastic rings. 
Um, one is, you know, you can kind of keep your, your test kit on there. So you come with cards similar to what others do. So when you're siding in, this is kind of, um, let's see if you can if we'll focus there. You'll see these numbers here. So as you go to uh, shoot, you just kind of mark your numbers. And then there's a card that comes with it that aligns with the tape so that you can kind of mark, you know, where your arrows are impacting at which yardages. And then from there, uh, it gives you a handy dandy uh, set of sight tapes, which you can then just kind of essentially match up your marks on the card with the appropriate sight tape, like so, um, and, and, and fasten it on. And you can, you know, pull, you know, that off and on. Um, the cool thing about the switch tapes is for those of you that may shoot different arrow weights or setups, think hunting versus tack. This would be super beneficial if you do that all with one bow. Um, or, you know, you, maybe you run a different setup for antelope or whitetail than you do maybe elk. Um, I think that that offers a lot of flexibility. Uh, and for us tinkers that are always messing with different arrows and arrow, arrow weights, it's also a big plus. So. Uh, the switch tape is uh, a really cool system. Really like that a lot. Um, you don't have to fool with taking tapes off and put them on. You can just pop them on and off. Also on the website, you can buy more of those rings. So I think you know, um, for, I don't know, 20, 20, 25 bucks or something like that, you can get a few of those um, and be extra flexible. So those are kind of the key features of the site. So I'm gonna talk about some things I don't like about the site. And then I'm going to talk about what I really do like about the site. Here's some stuff I don't really care for on the site that maybe they need to rethink. First thing is the gap, on the pin gap on the two pin is really large. Now, I said earlier that helps out with trying to get vein clearance out to really long distances and that's great, grand and wonderful, but in a hunting situation for me when I sighted in my bow, um, on this particular setup on my V3X29, I noticed that, you know, say your top pin's at 20, well, my bottom pin is close to 50. And that is an extremely large gap for me to gap shoot and guess. And it's not something in a hunting situation, which is pretty much what I do, to kind of guess where I am, um, you know, in between those yardages. Um, so again, if you're out, you know, west or something and you range and, you know, you've got an elk at, you know, 45 yards and he moves into, you know, 35 yards or something, you might not be able to guess that as much as you would if the, the pins were closer. Or, and here's what I would like to see, I love having that big gap. I love having that pin at the bottom. The stub XR is awesome, but he needs a buddy. He needs a buddy in between the top pin and the bottom pin um, to at least kind of cut out some distances uh, of trying to guess. So. I, I would love to see that on their next iteration if they ever if they ever get to that. The next thing that kind of goes with the pins is the pin color. Um, right now, you can only get uh, green and red, which is pretty standard, right? So, I mean, I'm kind of splitting hairs. It's pretty standard, but from my eye, uh, my eyesight, I which I don't really have eyesight issues. I just don't see or pick up red as much as I do green or say yellow. So it would be good to have an option to you know, have different, you know, fiber colors uh, for those of you that, that may, you know, not see a green as well or not see a red as well. That's kind of what you're stuck with at this point. It's not a deal breaker, but it would be pretty cool to see a difference there. The next thing on the pins is the brightness. So the pin brightness could also be better. There is a, a slider window on top that um, for those of you that, that have, you know, that might ask, it's very sturdy. It's not going to rattle around. It doesn't make any noise or anything like that. It's pretty firm and shifting. I just find that I'm probably never going to run it closed. I'm probably going to have to run it wide open and hope for the best. I'm, I am running though, we'll caveat that with the 0 0.10 pin size. And maybe it's just my eyesight and I'm getting old. I don't know. Uh, but I'd have to probably go to a 0.19 if they don't do something a little different on the fiber optics or visibility of the pins. They just could be a little bit brighter. Keep in mind, I'm used to running a black gold. This is the three pin that's actually on this boat, which has a 0 0.10 pin, but it's extremely bright. And I really have not had any issues um, on that. The uh, next thing would be 
On this second axis windage and vertical adjustment here, so it's all in one. So these two bolts are holding in, you know, your macro windage adjustment, so the big windage adjustment. It's also holding in your, you know, nor your your up and down movement. Um, so your your, uh, you know, you you loosen these and you can either move left or right or you can move up and down. Well, it also affects on the bottom here your second axis, right? So you have to really think through and be methodical on how you set and dial this thing in and fasten it in. So um, you could, you know, at the end, I think your second axis would probably be the last thing that you'd really focus on and, and get locked in, um, you know, but you could inadvertently move your vertical or move your windage left or right and your, your second axis is, is screwed and vice versa. So I think, you know, that could be a little frustrating I haven't worked out 100%, probably the best you know way of doing it, and those guys might have a better way of doing it, but um, I could see that that would be a little bit frustrating. Um, uh, you know, so, so you know, just be mindful of that if you do get this site, um, you're gonna have to be very careful and, and you know, cognizant of any kind of movements or adjustments could throw something else off, okay? The last thing is price. So this thing is, uh, and it's, you know, non-custom kind of base model, I guess, is what I got uh, setting is, is um, and this is the dovetail site, uh, you know, with the, the site housing and everything is 475. Okay, so I did a comparison with Spot Hog and uh, Black Gold to the closest thing possible. So I picked a two pin. So for like, for example, a Spot Hog would be the Fast Eddy XL and a double, double pin site. Um, that site, pretty much anywhere I could find it, is between $300, $320, so we'll just call it $310. Um, so, you know, again, you're looking at $165 uh, difference between this site and that site. Yes, you do get some more features here, but again, that's just, you know, up to you whether it's worth $165 uh, extra dollars. If you look at, say, a black gold with the, uh, I think it's called the Dual Track, um, Dual Track is. You know, again, same configuration. I did go for the pro model because again, it has your like custom micro windage adjustments and everything like that. And that, you know, depending on your setup could run from, you know, 350 to 380. Um, so no, you know, we'll just call it a hundred extra dollars for this. Is it worth it? There are some extra features on this site. Um, but again, that's just, you know, price wise, it is a bit higher than competition. Here's some things though to keep in mind. It's a startup company. They have a lot of startup costs. Is their manufacturing and supply chain completely bulletproof and cost efficient at this point in time? Look, I'm a CFO at a pretty big manufacturing company can tell you, it takes time to find your efficiencies, to find the best processes. So I think there is, and hopefully there is room to see them get their costs down a little bit, be able to pass that on to uh, all the consumers, uh, but keep that in mind. These guys are just getting started out. It costs a lot to get started. Um, so, you know, not the end of the world. I'm, I'm happy to fund startups, especially if they're innovating, which is when you're keeping that in mind, this, that you're buying innovation. You're also buying a lot of cost, uh, customization and it's high quality, which now I'd like to talk about what I do like. All right, so what I do like is it's a single post on, on this on this mag setup. Um, again, it's got the two pin single post, super clean picture. You've got you know the the top level is is, is at the, the the you know the top of the the site housing. It it is just clean. It's super clean, very appealing to the eye. I like that a lot. Uh, the other thing I like is the switch tapes. I think that's really cool, especially if you're a tinker like me or shooting different arrows and you know different set, setups. Uh, you can pop that on and, and just kind of you know run and gun. You could also, in a hunting situation, say something happened to that. You could have a spare in your pack ready to roll uh, with no guesses. You just pop it in and align it, and, and you know really you're you're unstoppable. Uh, the other thing I like is. You know, it, the, the bridge lock, it fits, you know, for your Matthew shooters, it fits the bridge lock system extremely well. Uh, pretty tight, in my opinion. Um, it also has enough left and right uh, windage adjustment to compensate for that being closer uh, to the riser. 
which I think is, is pretty nice. I know Spot Hog and, and uh, maybe some others had some issues initially uh, where you could only move it so much. And um, you know, these guys uh, definitely have it set up to shoot uh, if you're a V3X uh, shooter. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing is once this thing is locked down, it is a tank. So, you know, previously I'm using black gold, I'm using Spot Hog. Spot Hog is an absolute, you know, tank of a site as well, but this thing really doesn't budge. Micro adjustments can be fastened down. Um, your your, your uh, dial itself, so the uh, AES system here is, it's tight to begin with, but you can also lock this down. It won't lock it completely, but it's not moving. Um, and you really don't have to worry about that in a hunting situation. So there's no vibration, no buzzes. And originally when I shot it, I had a little buzz and I just figured out I hadn't tightened this. Once it's tightened, um, it's not moving. Um, and I have seen a couple other guys, one that's dropped his, his, his whole setup and um, it just made a little mark on the end of it and he keep rocking, you know, keep rocking. So uh, that is awesome. And then lastly, just kind of overall quality and aesthetics and balance. So again, I'm shooting a very balanced V3X 29, running it through the riser and you know, the, the dial is close in, the sight tape is on the inside, which you have an option of running that is on the inside, but it's just such a tight, compact, well, you know, made uh, site. So I really think that, you know, anybody that's in the, the new site market, these guys are definitely worth looking at. They have some stuff I know coming up in the future with a five pin. I've, I've seen some, um, you know, indications of a three pin potentially. So check them out, you know, give them an honest look. Um, if you can get your hands on it and kind of look at one, I also highly advise that. But for me, I think it's a pretty cool site. Yes, there's some things I'd love to see changed in the next iteration or so, um, you know, but of course we all have that with any site or bow or whatever else. Um, but I think this site company in general, the Dial Archery guys, it's, they're on the radar uh, for sure. They innovate, they think outside the box, and I cannot wait to see what they have uh, coming up in the future. So, again, go follow me on Instagram at s.g.homes. Um, there you'll find a lot of day-to-day -day content. I'll try to post as, as many art, uh, of uh, YouTube videos as I can. Uh, please like, comment, ask me any questions. I'm happy to uh, respond or DM me. I'm happy to help out wherever I can or answer any questions. Subscribe, have a good one. Aim small, miss small.